And we are 15 minutes away from opening our trade on this Thursday, the 4th of May. Mark Oppel, thanks for joining us. Whether watching RFD TV, a lot of folks tuning in on Rural Radio, Channel 147, and uh, Rich Nelson leading things off here from our friends at Allendale as he does every morning here. Rich, uh, things hope will be hopefully looking a little better from in your area of the country. Sure, hope to see something like that here. Of course, uh, these active rains for us, at least, are missing us in the northeast corner of Illinois. So. On our end, we're uh, hoping to get back in the fields here in just a few more days. So good, uh, good news for us, Lisa. Yeah, all right. Every Thursday, all things equal, we get the weekly export sales number. Let's take a look at the numbers and how you react uh, before the trade opens here in about 15 minutes. Numbers on uh, on corn, especially here, we're uh, pretty much right in the middle of the trade here. 796,000 metric tons. That was within the trade's expectation. They're looking for 700 up to 1.15. Over on the soybeans, we can call this number disappointing uh, officially here, 331,000 metric tons. Uh, and this was actually one of the weaker sales over the past few weeks. I actually won't call it that bad of a deal because we've already sold a heck of a lot in the past few weeks. In fact, we've already met our year's goal and where we need to have sales here for soybeans. Hmm. So the trade may call us a little bearish here for today, but uh, we actually won't call it uh, too bad at all. all right. uh, and lastly, on the wheat side, 822,000 tons. Uh, this actually was a, a much better than expected tr uh, number. 550 was the high end of the trade hopes. So uh, as far as today's numbers, uh, neutral on corn, uh, definitely positive on uh, on wheat and soybeans. By the headline look, it might be a little bearish, but uh, we call it uh, not too bad. All right, very good. And then we're going to add a couple more here. Uh, and get your thoughts in the trade overall. Grain sorghum coming in here, uh, 102,000 plus. Grain sorghum unknown destinations, a number one customer. Cotton coming in, cotton down about 30 percent here in the four-week average. Cotton at uh, 249,000 running bales and rice, 61,000 metric. Tons. All right, back to the corn trade and uh, thoughts here as we uh, begin the day. Still a lot of weather. Wow, just south of you across Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. It'll still be a while before those fields dry out. Uh, no doubt. In fact, those guys are definitely talking about replant. And, and the question in those areas is, uh, is can we get by here for a few uh, few more days and take a look at the crop? Or are we going to plan on replanting right now in terms of uh, making plans for it? So uh, a lot of confusion, still a lot of concern. But uh, for the trade standpoint, uh, maybe not a big market moving issue here for today's trade, though. Mm -hmm. As we see down about three, uh, three and a half here in the uh, overnight trade for corn. So the trade not really concerned. Soybeans. Uh, and the uh, overnight down uh, two, three cents there. I want to get to wheat. You sent, uh, and thank you so much for uh, some of the work uh, that you're helping us uh, understand this market here as far as winter wheat yields, uh, the wheat trade down. But talk about uh, this chart that we're seeing and that you have sent us here uh, and describe it maybe for those on the radio, the uh, yields and uh, total production and then Kansas mixed in. So we do watch this, of course, uh, winter wheat yields very closely, just like everybody else does. And in this, uh, this chart we're looking at right here shows a uh, comparison of both Kansas yields by themselves. And Kansas is the number one state here as far as producing winter wheat, 20% of the crop just out of Kansas by itself. And, of course, we can look at last year's uh, very exciting number, 57 bushels an acre out of Kansas, uh, an amazing record. And uh, certainly helps support the whole winter wheat number uh, as a whole, 55 bushels. So we're not arguing about how we're going to compare against that number. We've got to compare against the rest of these trades, uh, that we, the rest of these yields that we've seen the past few years. Uh, in fact, yesterday's numbers out of the uh, Kansas wheat tour, not too bad at all. Quite a bit of a, of, a, of a surprise here for us. Okay, and we'll get more on that here as we work through the day. But right now, we'll take a break, Rich, and uh, come back and we'll look at the livestock trade. You also have some thoughts. Wow, what a, a market here in this cattle trade. You've got some uh, chart uh, points to, pair, to compare there as well. Rich Nelson coming back after this. We continue. Rich Nelson joining us from Allendale as we take a look at the livestock trade about 10 minutes away from opening our cattle, the feeder cattle and hog trade. Wow, what an early uh, May it has been in this cattle trade, uh, Rich. Uh, talk a lot before, before we get to the uh, numbers here. Uh, we get weekly export sales for beef and pork as well. Take a look at the uh, beef and pork numbers uh, down from last week and down on the average here. 
That sure is right. So last week we had that amazing number, 20, uh, 21,000 metric tons. And we said that was 75% over last year in the same week. So big sales last week. Now this number here, 16,600 uh, metric tons. This was, you know, it was good. It's about 7% higher than last year. But uh, this certainly was nothing like the previous two weeks. So beef export sales may be a little lower than the trade was hoping for. Uh, over on the pork numbers here, we have 13,800 uh, metric tons. Uh, this was also a disappointment. In this case, 55% under last year in the same week uh, and weakest in the, same, uh, in the seven weeks. So uh, both uh, beef and pork may be slightly disappointing here this morning. And, wow, what a run has been, as you mentioned, in this beef trade. Uh, you put together some numbers here on our five area weekly prices here uh, as uh, we look at the uh, going back to 2009. And uh, talk about, uh, again, you forget about the 2000. Uh, 16 going into early 17 here and the, the drop of prices that we've seen in here. That sure is right. So we had that amazing decline in prices off that uh, of our record 2014 high. And what's really been interesting is we are still in expansion right now, especially mm. after that uh, 15, 16, and now this year. In fact, expansion is still going on. So higher and higher beef production, and yet this amazing cash cattle rally uh, certainly capped here uh, with just yesterday's trade. Uh, active sales in Nebraska up to 147, and active sales in the South up to 146. So amazing numbers, especially on a on a week-to-week -week basis as well. Exactly right. So the next question is, you know, where do we go from here in the cattle trade, in your view? And we can say certainly for the short term, based off of a limit up trade yesterday for the first two contracts, uh, we'll, we'll start off uh, quite a bit higher. Uh, some people are suggesting uh, two dollars higher, if not a little better, here for today's uh, open. So on the beef side, we're still recognizing it's still hard to find some market-ready cattle. And then the feeder cattle uh, futures there, uh, they have been uh, touching, and they will have expanded limits here on the day for uh, feeder cattle as well. Now on the, on the feeder side here, it looks like we'll see some uh, moderate gains as well. They didn't hold those gains as well as the fats did yesterday, but uh, in terms of today's discussion on feeders, uh, I would look for just a, a moderate, maybe dollar higher open, and then uh, probably a little higher off that, uh, mm -hmm. off that start. All right. Lean hogs, yeah, get your thoughts there. They've been uh, riding coattails, or they have some strength of their own to talk about. I actually like this hog market from its own separate fundamentals. Uh, good gains these past couple of days, two and three dollars higher for cash hog trade, uh, trading, and futures are now reacting to that excitement. So on the hog side, we've got uh, both this lower supply issue going into into uh, summer, uh, as well as this uh, this idea of this uh, very strong demand environment we're currently in. So uh, we like this market for a little bit higher on the on the future side for the next couple of weeks. Very good, Rich. Thanks for your time. As always, getting us off and started on a day and uh, with all the informa added information here for wheat and in our cattle prices here as well, we uh, look forward to keeping in touch. Sounds great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Rich Nelson from Allendale, and we are five minutes away, Christina, from opening our trade here. It's May the 4th here. It seems like it's about May the 24th, right. but uh, a lot of activity the first four days. Yeah, May is beef month, so. Well, that's true. Cattle making a big appearance for the first start of the month. Thank you so much. Markets Editor Markov.